Hi, I'm Dan and it's a review time and today we're going to be looking at this. This is the Iwata Revolution M Gravity Feed Single Action Airbrush. Yes, I've bought a single action airbrush. I've been looking at some of the forums when I've been researching airbrushes and to hear some people write it, it is actually a crime against humanity to actually buy a single action airbrush for modelling. But I kind of beg to differ and the reason why is because of this guy. This is my Pash H uh, single action airbrush which I've had for 30 plus years. It's been through the wars as you can probably tell. Um, really rugged, rugged uh, airbrush. I guess this is kind of the Sherman tank of airbrushes. It's a basic design. It's been around for decades. It sprays beautifully. I still use it every uh, on every model just about. And I've really enjoyed using it because single action airbrushes do have some advantages. One thing this airbrush doesn't have is a particularly fine needle. This has got the finest needle you can get and it's about a 0.4, maybe a 0.5 uh, millimeter needle effectively, which is great for some things, but not so ideal for others. So I thought I would treat myself to a new single action airbrush, but there aren't that many of them around and I did definitely want one that was going to be high quality. Now, Awada is a brand that most models are at least familiar with. It's got uh, quite a good review. A lot of people that buy a wider airbrushes tend to stick with them and don't move on to other brands after they've uh, purchased from this company. So I was certainly curious to see what they were like. The Revolution kind of got me in because it's a very novel single action airbrush and it's packaging and, uh, and not just in the box by the way but also just in how it presents itself. But first of all let's look at this box. How cool is this? It's a square box. You don't get that very often for an airbrush. Um, at the top there it says it's Revolution M. Same on the side there. We flip across this side, we actually see that there is an illustration for the Awada HP M1, which is what this particular airbrush is. It's a 1.5 milliliter cup, um, and it shows you the actual airbrush in actual size showing. So you can see this is quite an unusual looking airbrush. Uh, the other side there, we've got a little bit of details about the company, and on this side, we have the Awada HP M2 which is from the same family, except it's got a 7 milliliter cup and a larger needle. Um, don't think it actually tells me what size needle is, but I think from memory it's about a 0.4. So you can make a choice whether you want to have more paint flow with a bigger cup, or you'd like to have a finer needle with the smaller cup. On the bottom, we've got uh, a bit of a description about the M series, and once again we've got some details about the actual um, airbrushes themselves. There we go, so it is here. The HP M2 is a 0.4 and the HP M1 which we're going to review today is the 0.3. Okay, let's open up the box. And full disclaimer, I have used this airbrush before so I just repackaged it for this review so you could see what it looks like when you get one. Um, quite a novel packaging there as you can see. We've got the foam insert with our little airbrush sitting in there. Let's take the airbrush out. It's a little bit of a tight fit. There we go. And first things first, you can see it's quite a revolutionary design. There's nothing really like this um, from any other company. So that's the airbrush itself. Let's put that down for a moment and let's see what else we get. Let's pull this insert out and we have our instructions, our quick start guide for the airbrush. And the only accessory we get I guess we only really need one, is our little spanner for the uh, nozzle. So let's have a look at the instructions. Very straightforward. Uh, first of all, some information about attaching the air hose, about uh, putting in the paint, starting the airbrush and how to adjust um, the amount of paint that comes out by using the adjustment knob on the back of the airbrush. And then finally, just a quick note about cleaning the airbrush as well. So basically, very simple instructions, and that's because single action airbrushes are inherently a much simpler design, and that's one of the reasons why yours truly bought this airbrush, because I'm all about making things simpler. Uh, let's have a look at the airbrush itself for a moment. Uh, this one is a little bit grubby, so I do apologise. I probably could have done a slightly better job of cleaning it before this uh, presentation, but hopefully uh, you'll still get an idea of the quality. It's a very high quality chrome finish on the airbrush itself. Um, the actual design is quite unique. You can see it is very short. So let me just give you a couple of comparisons here. So here's the uh, the Pash H airbrush, as you can see. 
almost or well, probably even more than twice the size. Here's the Talon, which is a dual action airbrush, again, twice the size. So it is a very small, stubby design. And initially that might seem like it's not going to work particularly well, but I can assure you that actually it's quite comfortable to use, surprisingly, actually. Um, standard sort of configuration at the front here, we've got our separate uh, guard here for the needle, and we also have the nozzle as well, obviously. We can remove both if we want, so I'll just take both off for a moment. The actual uh, nozzle itself is your standard sort of Iwata uh, nozzle. Let me just zoom in a bit there for you. Um, as you can see there, standard sort of one that they use. Not a particularly big fan of those, I have to say. I think they're a little bit too delicate, but that's the way that Iwata does them for most of their range. Um, and it does seem to work fine. I haven't had really any real problems with paint clogging in this one, which is uh, really good as well. So that minimizes the number of times that I really have to think about potentially taking that particular uh, nozzle off. So I'm just going to put that all back together again very gently. Um, being a single action airbrush, of course, the trigger motion is very straightforward. It's just simply up and down. There's nothing else to do. Having said that, it has got a very nice positive feel. The actual top of the trigger here is slightly indented, so your finger rests comfortably on that. The paint cup itself with the 0.3 is reasonable size, but it is a little bit on the small size, I guess. But it's okay for most work. As you can see, a nice high quality finish on the inside there as well. Easy to get to the bottom there and clean it out if you need to. No problems there at all. Now, on most single action airbrushes that we're used to, let me just zoom back out here a little bit for this bit. On most uh, traditional single action airbrushes, they look a bit and work a bit like this one here. You actually would adjust the paint flow by simply twisting the actual needle or the actual nozzle at the bottom here. And obviously you adjust the paint, uh, the air pressure, sorry, from your compressor. So in this one, they've eliminated this front piece and basically moved it to the back of the airbrush. So instead we have this little dial and if we actually look at the top of the dial, and again we'll zoom in a little bit, sorry if I'm making you a bit seasick with this going in and out, but it's the only way to really show you. You can see there are numbers actually etched into that component there. So we can actually start here, the zero, which means that we've actually blocked off the flow. And as we move it up to one and two and so forth, we actually increase the amount of paint that will flow through the airbrush. So the idea there basically with a single action airbrush is we can then just adjust that to get the paint flow that we want. Once we're happy with that, then we can go ahead and just start spraying. So why would you do that rather than, for example, um, just using a dual action airbrush? Well, I'll give you my personal philosophy on this and you might uh, choose to disagree with me, and that's fine. But I like simplicity in my model making. I don't particularly want to overcomplicate it. And dual action airbrushes are fantastic and they have their place and I do own them, but they do come with some extra complexity. They are a more complicated device, so they require you to be um, thinking about two things at the same time, both the air and also the paint flow. Uh, they also are more complex, so that means that they require a little bit more cleaning. They're a little bit more complex to dismantle and work with. And what I found myself doing over a period of time was using this old airbrush, my Pash H, more and more instead of my dual action because it was just quicker and easier to get this up and going. I could whack the paint into it, make a very simple adjustment on the front here and start spraying and get the job done. And the cleanup was infinitely easier on this particular airbrush because I didn't have to worry about the paint going back here or anything, it's all sitting at the front. So it just worked really well. So I wanted something like that, but perhaps a little bit more finesse. And in particular, I also didn't want to have to have a paint cup all the time because that does introduce a bit of a problem because I've got to put paint in there. It has to work its way up the top here into this part here. And that meant I had to put the air pressure up on my compressor. And when I was flushing the airbrush out after cleaning it, that meant I needed more cleaner because it also had to clean all down through here and into the paint cup. What I wanted was the gravity fed paint uh, mechanism, but I wanted the simplification that a single action airbrush gives me, and that's why I've chosen this one. Um, the other great advantage of a single action airbrush is these work superbly for metallic finishes. 
Uh, when you're trying to get a metal finish on an aircraft, for example, an aircraft kit, really what you want is consistency. You want a consistent application of the paint. That'll give you the best metallic finish. Now, by nature, when you're using a dual action airbrush, you're going to be pushing down on the trigger and then back to get the paint flow. And if you're like most people, you're not going to get that once and then repeat that like that. You're going to actually keep going there, stopping, start, stop, start. And as a result, there is going to be some differences between each coat of paint that you apply, no matter how careful you are. With this guy, I set the, the back here to what I want it to be. And when I press that button, I'm going to get consistently the same flow of paint. So as a result, uh, I've found that you get a better finish with metallic paints using this, or at least you can get a better finish easier than you can by using a dual action. The other reason I like these is because it allows me to focus my attention less on operating the airbrush and more on the actual subject that I'm painting. And that also can result in a better quality finish because I'm no longer trying to juggle two things in my mind at the same time. This is all set and forget. Now I can just focus on how far I am from the model and my application of the paint. Uh, and I'm not worried about actually operating the airbrush so much. It's a personal preference, but I do think that these airbrushes certainly are excellent for primers and clears and things like that. But they do also have applications, uh, particularly for modelers that are doing single color subjects like AFE and things like that. They still have a lot of uses. But let's have a go at using the airbrush now and try it out and see what we can do with it. Okay, so I've got my uh, airbrush connected up to my compressor, which is running at a very low pressure at the moment, about 15 psi, because I want to see how uh, good we can go with drawing lines and things like that with this airbrush before we go for wide coverage. Um, the paint we're going to be using for this demo is Alclad 2 Lacquer Gloss Black Base, which is a nice thin lacquer, so we don't have to worry about uh, thinning that. And I think that just gives us a more consistent benchmark to work with. Uh, I'm just going to be using the back of a Kellogg's Corn Flakes box here as my uh, test area. And we'll just put some of this paint in the airbrush before you start. The manual does recommend that you close it off by setting it back to zero, which I've just done. So I'm just going to pour some okay, gloss black in here. So make sure that it's spraying which it isn't which it shouldn't be because I've got it on zero which means that the nozzle should be closed off so let me just bring that into range so you can see what I'm doing here so I've got that on zero let's let's crank it up to about one here and just see what happens I don't know if you can see that but there's actually some paint now coming out of it this is about 15 psi so let's see how we can go with drawing a line I might just put a cap on here as well just in case Get a bit carried away and spill it. All right, so here we go. A little bit of a, a bit of a spider there. I think that may have been um, some cleaner that was still left in the airbrush from the last time I've cleaned it. So I'm not too concerned about that. It's spidering a little bit. I think it might need even perhaps a slightly higher pressure. As you can see, quite fine lines there, but I'm getting the feeling that my airbrush would be a little bit happier if I put a bit more air pressure in there. So let's just take it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm running at about 20 psi now. Let's just see if we get a better result. Uh, still getting a little bit, so let me just wind that back a bit. As you can see, spraying lines with this... Um, sorry, I'm a little bit out of camera there. Let me just try that again for you. Spraying lines with this airbrush is extremely easy. Um, it's not as fine as my point two, which is fair enough. It shouldn't be. It's a, a smaller airbrush, but it does seem to work very well. I'm a little bit confused there. I'm not sure whether that's working for me or against me, raising the air pressure. I'll just put it up to 30 now, just an experiment. Now, 
and you can see it's running pretty well there so actually it's working across quite a wide range of air pressures without any trouble at all um, but I'm thinking we haven't got quite to the best of it yet let me just try even so we started originally with about 15 so I've just put it down to about 12 now there we go there we go so I don't know if you can see that but I'm getting very fine and quite nice control over it it's not quite as good as my point two, the Tamiya airbrush which I review in another separate review but honestly for a single action airbrush for the point three needle there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all let's try the uh, little camouflage test I do so I'm just going to draw some lines there and just see how we can go with spraying within the lines over a little bit there but that wasn't the airbrush that was me As I've said in my other review I'm not the world's greatest airbrush operator so if you're an average Joe with this sort of thing uh, welcome to my world but as you can see I've just increased the paint a little bit there just to make it a bit easier to get the coverage as you can see that's working quite fine so there's absolutely no reason at all none whatsoever that you couldn't use that for just painting and camouflage on your models and if you're doing tanks particularly I think this would be fantastic because it's a much easier airbrush to operate so let's now go the other way we've been using this with only a little bit of paint flow coming through at the back here so let's open the nozzle up quite a bit and see how we go with coverage Keeping in mind I'm still running this at about 12 psi, so quite a low. That's fantastic. I mean if you just wanted to get like a nice dust coat over your model. Hopefully that's coming up, that's quite fine. And if you wanted a nice dust coat that would work great. Let's put it up even higher. So I'm put it up to about four now. And you can see it's definitely wider but I think we're now fighting the air pressure a little bit. Is world champions when it joins 23 other teams from around the world in the Cathay Pacific seven aside tournament. At this time, Queensland will have rugby world and we'll wrap up the night with big league soccer at 10 past 11. So why not look in again tomorrow? But now for all of us here at the ABC, this is Graham Linden saying good night and have a great week. So um, what exactly happened here? Well, if you have the experience back in the day when you used to record on these things called VHS and Betamax and you thought you recorded something and then someone accidentally records over it, well, I kind of had that experience. I accidentally deleted a segment of this actual review of the airbrush. But I do have the two parts that go from the beginning and the end. And so I thought it was worthwhile to keep this review. So where we should have had the review for spraying the wide brush we now have the closing um, video for the Australian Broadcasting Corporation in 1985 back when TV actually used to close down at night and people used to go home and sleep um, what a novel idea that was um, so we're going to skip past a whole section but what I did do in the video that's missing was I did spray broad coverage which worked terrific and I also sprayed quite a lot of fine lines, which equally worked really well. And as you'll see in the next video, I'll do a little bit of modeling and give you a bit of a, a bit of a sum up of what I think of the airbrush. So again, apologies for the missing bit of video, but I hope you enjoyed seeing a, a camel and a truck. And we'll get back to the video uh, airbrush review.
Okay, so I've just um, had to take a break there just because I needed to put a little bit more paint in the airbrush and also just to adjust the pressure. So I've now got the airbrush running at around about uh, 15 psi. And we're just going to try over here and see if we can just do a little bit of mottling effect like you might on an aircraft. Yeah, look, no problem at all. Um, cardboard actually absorbs the paint a little bit, so it's probably not as, as good as you would get actually on a real plastic model, but I think you get the general idea that I had no problem with controlling that at all. Um, it worked fine, and if we were doing like aircraft exhaust or something like that, I just start close, pull away. Yeah, look absolutely fine. So it's a single action airbrush, but it is still a remarkably versatile uh, airbrush. It's certainly extremely high quality, very easy to use, very easy to clean. Um, I really think these are a great idea. If you, yes, you might argue they're a luxury if you can only afford one airbrush and you decide to get a dual action. That's fair enough, but. I really think a lot of modelers would benefit from having a good second, uh, a good second airbrush in their um, arsenal and a good single action airbrush in their arsenal. And I think um, the Iwata HPM1 is certainly one to consider. And if you want to do a bit more priming, maybe you're working with um, something like Steinle Res, you might want to look at the HPM2, which functionally works the same. It just happens to have a bigger needle and a slightly bigger paint cup. But really impressed with this airbrush it's good quality it's reasonably priced for an awada as well which is another great thing about this one uh, don't let the unconventional design put you off it is still quite comfortable i would argue it's not quite as comfortable as a conventional airbrush i would have to say this one for example is a little bit more comfortable to hold but it's really not a problem for the amount of time that you would be operating one of these while you're painting your model and it's just a great all-round tool the last thing I want to say about this airbrush, it is so easy to clean. It is so easy to clean compared to a dual action airbrush. So for a lot of the jobs that we do where we're just painting solid colours, um, doing basic camo, that kind of thing, this airbrush is going to do all that for you, no problem at all, and it's going to be quicker and easier to set up and to clean. And that means you're going to enjoy the whole process a little bit more and you're going to get a great consistent result. One final thing just to mention too about these airbrushes if you are someone who likes to do aluminium type finishes on aircraft, uh, if you're a fan of some of the newer style paints like these extreme metals or you're uh, a fan of the Alclad equivalents, you need to get one of these airbrushes. I can't really recommend them enough for that kind of work. Um, here's a, uh, a drop tank that I did. This is um, just using uh, the extreme metal um, Extreme metal aluminium, I think it was, uh, just, a, just a standard aluminium. And this has actually been coated with one of the new AK Interactive uh, finishes as well on top of that. But it just was so easy to apply this. I used the Alclad Black and then I put the extreme metal aluminium out of the top and it was just a pleasure to work with doing this kind of work with this single action airbrush. It just worked beautifully. So they're a great airbrush if you're going to be doing any kind of metal finishes at all on your models and I think they'd be great for um, armoured fighting vehicles as well where you're painting those you know those blocks of colour maybe doing a bit of colour modulation as well um, this airbrush will do all that absolutely fine so highly recommended that's the Iwata HP M1 and we'll catch you on the next review thanks for watching